Over the course of its six-year lifespan, Destiny 2 has gone through a diverse list of damage metas, from repeatedly blasting Kallus with rockets to repeatedly blasting Nezarek with rockets. Jokes aside, now that I'm pretty much done with my damage testing project, I wanted to take this opportunity to use the knowledge that I've gained to answer a question I've had for a long time. Given that I started playing the game towards the end of Beyond Light, I was never around to live out the glory days of quick swapping and auto-loading Luna Factions. As a result, I've always wondered how today's DPS options stack up to the best of the best around during the early days of Destiny. While we ran into some challenges when trying to compare some of these options, I did my best to approach this video's topic with the most fun theoretical in mind. If we took something like Anarchy Mountaintop, stored it in a time capsule, and brought it forward to the present day, reverting all of the nerfs and reworks but allowing access to today's sandbox options, including surges and the like, what would its DPS look like? Unfortunately, there are some limitations to this approach. The vast majority of year 1 metas were something that we had to skip since the game was so fundamentally different back then that I was unable to find any usable reference points to scale and compare current DPS options with things like Sins of the Past, Void Eichelos Shotgun, Cold Heart, and Whisper of the Worm. By my estimation, these damage options were nowhere near the rest of what we'll discuss in this video anyways, but I'd like to get this disclaimer out of the way before we get started. Let's start from the bottom and work our way up. Thunderlord. A lot of you might be surprised by this inclusion. Obviously, Thunderlord was never in contention as the best option in Destiny 2 at any point in its history, and that's not really surprising given that it's a machine gun. However, the discussion around Thunderlord, especially around the time of Root of Nightmare's release, generated so much talk about its usage that I felt compelled to include it here, if only to be a benchmark that everything following it will size up to. In order to give it a fighting chance, I've given it the old Lightning Rounds interaction with Divinity, where the perk would trigger every 6-7 shots instead of 13, and given it the standard Luna buff and Tractor debuff, as well as 3 arc weapon surges to pair it with Actium War Rig. As you'll see throughout the rest of this video, weapon DPS strategies will usually be paired with current day Foe Tracer, since it allows for a 25% surge boost to a matching subclass weapon, on top of 3 regular surges for your other weapons. However, since this is a machine gun that requires continuous firing, I chose to include Actium Warrig instead. Results-wise, given that the Lightning Strike only accounts for about an eighth of Thunderlord's damage to begin with, reverting the patch only boosted Thunderlord DPS by around 13%. As for the raw DPS number, we're looking at 115,346 DPS, which is pretty much equal to Xenophage with Actium Warrig, except with higher total damage at just over 4 million. Retrofit Escapade Many of you probably remember the hilarity that ensued after people tried combining pre-rework Volatile Rounds with a Rapid Fire Machine Gun. At the start of Season of the Seraph, Volatile Rounds did not have any real limit to how often their explosive effect could trigger, so a 900 RPM machine gun was the perfect candidate for creating rapid purple explosions, especially one with perks like 4x a charm and target lock. Much like the previous weapon, we're going to give this one Acti more rig as well and assume that the player firing it has constant Volatile Rounds uptime. I've also taken the liberty of assuming that you have target lock at max stacks throughout your entire firing duration instead of needing a ramp up. So how does Retrofit stack up to Thunderlord? Well, given that Volatile Rounds was established at the time as an approximate 56% buff to Retrofit's normal damage, that means our DPS stacks up to around 158,814, which by today's standards is right around the DPS of spamming Bipod Apex Predator shots, boosted by Pack Hunter and reloaded using Radiant Dance Machines. That's a big jump over Thunderlord in both departments, with total damage unsurprisingly topping out at a massive 12.8 million. Swarm of the Raven This one's definitely a throwback for the older players watching. While the weapon in question here is not particularly remarkable, what was different at the time was what made this DPS option special. First, auto-loading Luna Factions meant that you could shoot it non-stop, and second, Tractor Cannon used to debuff for a 50% bonus to Void Weapon damage, rather than a 30% bonus to all damage. While it's probably no surprise that the total damage of a damage perk lacking Rapid Fire Grenade Launcher isn't very high at just under 1.6 million, this thing's DPS isn't actually that bad by today's standards, clocking in at 180,855 DPS. Given how long ago this weapon was around, I had to do some proportional math with clips of comparisons to Anarchy at the time, but I managed to work out its base damage value with the timing value stolen from today's rapid fire heavy GLs. Storm Chaser While this one probably wasn't as memorable as some of the other options on this list, at the start of Season of the Haunted, the newly released Duality Dungeon introduced the aggressive frame linear fusion rifle to Destiny 2. The special thing about this archetype was that it was a 3 shot burst, but what made it broken was the fact that you were able to pre-charge your next Storm Chaser shot while your previous shot was still firing. This allowed aggressive linears to shoot at pretty much the same rate as precision linears, with significantly higher damage per shot. So what would Storm Chaser look like today? Well today we've got quite a few more aggressive linear fusion options, so let's pretend that this pre-charge change never happened, and use a more potent linear option that exists in the Season 22 sandbox, Briar's Contempt. 
With Rewind Rounds and Enhanced Surrounded, a 47% damage perk compared to the 20% from Fire and Line Storm Chaser, this should give a more accurate representation of what pre-charged aggressive linears would look like against today's meta contenders. With Lumina, Tractor, and Foe Tracer surges as usual, as well as reverting the Lightfall linear nerf, this thing lands itself at a solid 187,817 DPS with a total of around 4.4 million damage. That DPS is comparable to dumping a field prep clown cartridge hothead with Radiant Dance Machines, which is pretty solid for a linear fusion rifle with no particle deconstruction. Falling Guillotine Those of you that played during Arrivals will definitely remember this one. As the first vortex frame sword in the game, Falling Guillotine quickly took over the DPS meta, especially assisted by the Oppressive Darkness Seasonal Artifact mod. From one phasing Kel Echo to baking raid bosses like Riven, Guillotine was undoubtedly a staple pick during the end of Year 3. After reverting the Vortex Heavy Attack nerf as well as the General Sword nerf, Falling Guillotine finds itself in a similar situation as Storm Chaser. What do I mean by that? Since Guillotine's gutting, Bungie has released 5 more Vortex Frame Swords, the strongest of which has been Death's Razor, a relatively recent Warlock-only release. With Enhanced Surrounded, a 42-ish percent damage perk, as well as all of the prior nerfs reverted as mentioned, on top of Lumina, Tractor, Lucent Blades, Solar Surges, and the newly added Banner of War 10% Sword buff, Death's Razor finds itself at a respectable 195,646 DPS using a 1 heavy 2 light combo with a total of 11.5 million damage. Izanagi's Burden Our next contender is actually going to make a repeat appearance later on in this list, but first let's talk about it in isolation. While using Izanagi's Burden by itself for DPS sounds far-fetched in today's meta, during Year 3 it was a pretty common occurrence because of how the gun worked at the time. Back then, the re-honing animation stacked with reload buffs, and there was no firing lockout, meaning you could shoot the gun as fast as you could ready it again from loading a honed edge shot. On top of this, I've removed the adaptive sniper as well as universal sniper nerfs that occurred shortly after this meta, and given Izzy today's Lumina, Tractor, and 3 Kinetic Surges. As a result, we're looking at 213,903 DPS, with an unsurprising low total of 2.2 million, given that it's just 6 honed shots from a special weapon that we're talking about here. DPS-wise, that's similar to today's Caraxus's Distress, with Envious Assassin and Enhanced Surrounded. Sleeper Simulant When people think broken meta in terms of weapons, an era that frequently gets brought up is Season of the Lost, with the insane Particle Deconstruction Fusion Rifle debuff mod. Not only was this mod an unprecedented 40% debuff, which exceeded the typical maximum debuff value of 30%, but it also stacked with Divinity, which at the time was a 30% debuff. With Bungie having recently shown love to the linear class of heavy weapons, it was the perfect time for Sleeper to re-emerge into the DPS meta. While Sleeper was unaffected by the Lightfall linear nerf, I'm going to take into account some of the other circumstances at the time that made Sleeper even stronger than it was from Particle Deconstruction alone. First, Focusing Lens allowed players standing in wells to do 25% more non-stasis weapon damage to targets affected by stasis. And second, I'm going to use Font of Might, since Reign of Fire is the best sleeper reload option, given that a Fochkiss or Hunter would only be able to dodge reload sleeper once. And finally, Power of Rasputin was also a factor that boosted weapon damage to enemies near Warmind Cells by 10%, so I'll throw that in as well. Combining these multipliers with Lumina, we end up with a 214,384 DPS value, which is nearly identical to Izzy, but with a much higher total damage value of 4.7 million. Double Slug Anarchy now this meta was one where I was around. I distinctly remember doing Templar Spoils Farms during Season of the Splicer and figuring out how to quickswap with my Tactical Mag first and last out, which I still have to this day. For this option, I've taken a lot of liberties to make it as realistic as possible by today's standards. First, we're using two Surrounded Shotguns here, Fortissimo 11 and first and last out. At the time, people generally use Recombination Heritage and Vorpal Philo, but if we're gonna try and pretty up every option on this list, we might as well go all the way. On top of this, I've of course undone the Anarchy nerf, the Slug nerf, and the Quick Swap patch, restoring the Slug to Slug timing to its former glory. I've also incorporated Reign of Fire, a new addition to the Sandbox since those days, and we are of course stacking Tractor, Post Buff Lumina, and a 1-2 Kinetic Arc Surge split. And since this meta occurred during Year 4, we can also throw in Focusing Lens and Power of Rasputin. With all this stacking combined, we're looking at a DPS value of 224,134, and a total of 5.05 million damage. Funnily enough, that means that Double Surrounded Slug Anarchy with all of the associated nerfs reverted does essentially equal DPS to today's Izanagi GL Apex rotation on Needlestorm and Necrotic Grip. Actually a very interesting comparison given that I would consider this DPS value to be the gold standard by which everything else should be compared. If there was one DPS strat today that I would consider the default rotation for most bosses, this would be it. As such, it goes without saying that everything after this entry starts venturing into deep waters. 
Izanagi HGL or Billy Billy. While some of you are probably familiar with the Izzy Wendy rotation 13331, this particular variant 13233 was one that was very dear to speedrunners, one that was used especially often on the Sanctified Mine in Garden of Salvation. Coined Billy Billy by English speaking speedrunners who first found the rotation on said site, posted by a user named W66, this rotation is a great example of how quick swapping innovated on existing damage strategies to bring them to the next level. Like we've done for past entries, I've also taken some liberties here to bring this rotation to today's sandbox. Instead of something like Truth Teller, we're substituting Wilderflight in, since double fires do significantly more damage than lightweight special GLs. On top of this, we're stacking post buff Lumina, Tractor, Bow Tracer Surges, Kinetic Surges, pre rework Explosive Light, and of course, we're reverting all of the nerfs that affected Izanagi's Burden after this period. With the frame data from the original W66 clip, I've determined that in Season of the Witch, the Billy Billy rotation would do around 253,105 DPS and a total of around 5.06 million damage. While there isn't really a good comparison point for this damage rotation today, I'd say the DPS is similar to spamming Horseman mags using Reign of Fire, though obviously Horseman has far less total damage. Triple GL Swapping Instead of including Anarchy Mountaintop, I decided to do this damage option a little more justice by including the Quick Swap version using two special GLs. In this case, that would be the Mountaintop and Wilderflight, the Double Fire GL mentioned earlier from Spire the Watcher. While Triple GL swapping was a very niche damage option, as most players opted to dump Swarm of the Raven then Mountaintop by itself, I couldn't help but include this rotation after seeing Boop's Solo Argos clip using it. In terms of stacking, nothing crazy here besides pre-nerf Mountaintop and current Wilderflight with Bow Tracer Surges, Kinetic Surges, Lumina, and Tractor. Assuming you start by sticking the boss with two Anarchy and then proceed to shoot 19 of each of your GLs into the boss, you'll end up doing 263,997 DPS with a total of around 3.6 million damage. That comes out to right around where the highest fully fleshed out damage rotation in the game right now is, which involves spamming Balador's Wrathweaver's boosted Cold Comfort using Radiant Dance Machines. Berserker Abilities This brings us to our top 5 DPS metas remaining on the list. This goes without saying, but all 5 of these options go pretty far beyond what is possible in today's sandbox, with 3 of the 5 involving broken abilities, and 1 of the 5 involving a swap bug. First up, we have Berserker Abilities. Up until the most recent patch, Banner of War enjoyed a period where its 40% melee damage bonus stacked twice, once from your own banner and once from your teammate's banner. By combining the benefits of Biotic Enhancements from the Syntheseps Exotic, as well as 1-2 Punch and Frenzied Blade, you could do an absolutely massive amount of damage for almost zero ammo expenditure, as evidenced by the damage strategies employed in the most recent Duo Crota completions. Since this is an ability-based rotation, it technically has infinite total damage, but its CPS values assuming you do 3 melees, super, and then 3 melees, is 266,435. If you focus on just the melees alone, instead of including Blade Fury, which is a lower DPS component, the DPS goes up to over 400k, which is far above any damage rotation currently on the damage ranking in my spreadsheet. While the strategy will still be good even after the banner stacking removal, its brief stint in the spotlight is something I wanted to immortalize in this video, so here it is. Cold Comfort Much like Storm Chaser, Cold Comfort was another DPS meta contender that was brought to us attached to a new dungeon, Ghosts of the Deep. While nothing about Cold Comfort itself was changed from last season to this season, in fact the Envious bug right now makes it even better, Wolfpack rounds were recently unintentionally changed, resulting in a 30% reduction in rocket damage when using Pack Hunter. While this rocket is probably still fresh in people's minds and probably in their inventories too, let me remind you of what we stacked with Cold Comfort to make it as good as it is, was. Tractor, Lumina, Stasis Surges, Pack Hunter, Bane Switch, Envious Assassin, Restoration Ritual, Balladorous Wrathweavers, and of course Radiant Dance Machines all work together to bring us a grand total of 389,752 DPS, with a total of 4.6 million damage across 10 rockets. The Fourth Horseman this one stuck around for a while, Bungie tried to patch it once, sort of failed, but we're using the original version for the purposes of this video. You might be wondering why weapons aren't immediately able to be fired after swapping them if you're a newer player. Well, this bug is the reason. Back during Season of Defiance, if you swapped from a slug shotgun to the fourth horseman and immediately unloaded your mag, each individual horseman pellet would take on the properties of the slug shotgun shot, resulting in insane DPS for just that mag. However, you could recreate this bug repeatedly by swapping on and off horsemen, which resulted in some absolutely insane DPS. And one of the most popular clips of this bug, my friend Ritz does nearly half of Templar's health in one horseman mag. Solo Nezarek was done in one phase with this bug. Rolk's health was depleted in its entirety by a single player using this bug. So how's the DPS? 
If you account for the swap time between repeated attempts to perform this bug, it's somewhere around 946,423, which is absolutely insane compared to some of the other options on this list. Given that you can do this 3 times per rally, that's a total of 10.7 million damage, with each shot doing around 3.58 million damage. Shield Bash These last two are so absolutely broken that nothing will likely ever compare to them for the rest of Destiny 2 history, especially given how long both options were allowed to exist in the game. Shield Bash in particular was in the game for the majority of Year 5. By stacking Tractor, Offensive Bulwark, Pre-Nerf 1-2 Punch, Pre-Nerf Burning Fists, Current Banner of War, and the Pre-Removal Frozen Melee bonus, a single Shield Bash did around 6.2 million damage to Templar, which results in a DPS of around 3.5 million, assuming you are bashing back-to-back, -back, which was possible with Elemental Wells, Orbs, and Heavy Handed back then. If you think 3.5 million DPS is a lot, this next entry is... Uh, quite a lot higher. Of course, we're talking about Throwing Hammer. If you thought buff and debuff stacking in the early days of Destiny was crazy, this was probably the ultimate lesson to the sandbox team at Bungie when it comes to allowing too many buffs to stack. By combining Tractor, Roaring Flames, 1-2 Punch, Burning Fist, Turn the Tide, Ward of Dawn's melee bonus, the Frozen melee bonus, and today's Banner of War, you could throw a hammer, have it bounce up to 22 times inside a boss's hitbox, and do around 265 million damage. 265 million damage. That's a number so large that most players probably don't even understand the scope of how big it is. It's kind of hard to measure DPS when a single hammer one-shots every single Raiden dungeon boss in the game. So how did I do it? I took a clip of a hammer kill using bouncing hammers in Atheon's knee, and I counted the number of bounces, which added up to 22, like I said before. Then I took the base value of a throwing hammer, and I just did the math. So 265 million, how much is that? For reference, the Templar scaled health values of every raid and dungeon boss currently in Destiny 2 add up to around 232 million. That means that a single hammer from this time period with today's Banner of War added on would do enough damage to kill every single raid and dungeon boss health bar combined with a clean 33 million left over, which is like two extra warp priests and change. Oh yeah, DPS. Since you could throw two hammers every 2.183 seconds before the 1-2 punch changes, that's a DPS value of around 243 million. So again, you can kill every raid and dungeon boss in the game once every second. Looking back at the historical tab on my spreadsheet while writing this, it's pretty funny seeing the bottom half of the list compared to the top. We have numbers ranging from Retrofit's 158k to Cold Comfort's 389k, and then in the top three entries we jump from 946k to 3.5 million to 243 million. I hope this video concept was as entertaining to watch as it was to record and test. Thankfully, this data didn't take me that long to collect thanks to the absolutely insane amount of timing and health bar information I've gathered over my time working on this project. And that's the goal at the end of the day, to create a database so vast that any academic curiosity about D2 damage can be sated through some simple number crunching and rearranging. I learned some pretty interesting things through the recording of this video. For example, reverted double surrounded slug anarchy being about equal to modern AZGL Apex is an interesting comparison. I also had a lot of fun calculating the exact DPS values of broken hammers. If you're interested in the math yourself, you can check out the historical tab of my spreadsheet linked below. I'll probably make one last DPS video going over the best damage strategies for every class before I stop making damage videos until the meta changes. Stay tuned for videos on special weapon analysis, which are coming soon.